Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So Black Forest Lab, the folks behind the Flux models, just dropped some new image editing models called Flux.1 Context. These models let you modify an input image simply by using text instructions. A couple of months back, I showed you the image editing in GPT-40, which does similar stuff to these new context models. After playing around with them, I found Flux.1 Context is way better at keeping characters looking consistent. So in this video, we are going to put the images from Flux.1 Context and GPT-40 side by side. You'll see just how well Flux.1 Context does. I'll also share some tips and tricks for using Flux.1 Context models in Conf UI. Alright, let's dive in. Okay, to get Flux.1 context models running in Conf UI, first, make sure Conf UI is updated to the latest version. That's 0.3.39. After updating, give Conf UI a restart. Once you're back in Conf UI, go ahead and click Settings. Then click Users, and then hit the Sign, Sign Up button. If this is your first time using an API service in Conf UI, I suggest logging with an API key. You'll need to put in your API key here. If you don't have one, just click Get One here. That takes you to the official Conf UI website. Now you can log in with your Google account or make a new account with your email. Once you are logged in, it will take you to the page for your Conf UI API key. If you don't have a key yet, just click the New button. Give your API key a name, then click Generate. And that's your new API key. Keep in mind, you only see this key once. So make sure to copy it and keep it somewhere safe. Once you have your API key, you can log in to your Conf UI account with it. Before you can use the API service, though, you'll need to buy some credit. Right now, the context models come in two flavors, Pro and Max. A pro version service called cost four cent. After you got your credit, you can start using the context model in Conf UI. The workflow is pretty straightforward. It doesn't even need your GPU. The main node you'll be using is this Flux.1 Context Pro Image node. There's also a node for the max version of the context model but that API service isn't up and running just yet. Finding a node is super easy. If you updated Conf UI to the latest version, just type context into the search bar in Conf UI. All right, let's try putting this dark red t-shirt onto the woman who's wearing the white t-shirt. First up, we use this image concatenate node to stick these two images together. Now this combined image is what we use as the input for the sampler. You really only need to tweak two things, the prompt and the aspect ratio. Once you've set those up, just run the workflow. Let's check out the output image. The image quality isn't amazing, to be honest. It's not a huge image either, only 832 by 1248 pixels. Maybe the max version of the context model will give us better quality. But hey, the woman looks pretty consistent, doesn't she? And now let's compare it with the red t-shirt image. Look at that, the patterns on the red t-shirt are perfectly copied over. Next, let's compare the output from Flux.1 context with the output from ChatGPT. The image on the far right is from ChatGPT. See how the facial features changed quite a bit? And that green lip pattern on the letter O is gone. But the Flux context model's output still has it. But let me tell you, writing prompts for the Flux context model can be a little tricky. Let's look at the first prompt I tried.
In this prompt, I describe the woman's pose in detail. But the output image didn't really keep her pose or her face consistent. Then I changed the prompt. This time, I didn't describe the pattern on the t-shirt. Instead, I asked it to keep the woman's position and pose the same. Now, her t-shirt is red, but the pattern stayed the same as before. Next, I added some words to describe the t-shirt pattern. In the output, most of the printed words are there, but the white graphic is missing. I actually put white graphic in the prompt. Maybe saying on the front wasn't specific enough about where it is. In the final version of the prompt, I used the whole sentence just to describe the white graphic, and then the final output image looked pretty good. On the other hand, writing a prompt is easier in ChatGPT. I don't have to stick the images together side by side. I can just say image 1 and image 2 in a prompt to talk about the input images. I also don't need to describe the t-shirt pattern in super detail. So now you see the differences in writing prompts for Flux Context and ChatGPT. Let's compare their output images side by side again. This will also show you some good ways to use the Flux Context model. Since we've seen this virtual trial, let's try something a bit harder. This middle image is our input. The job is to put this dress on a woman riding a bicycle. You can see right away that Flex Context did a better job. Now let's look at the original dress. You can see the output isn't perfect here either, right? The neckline of the dress is different from the original. So when it comes to image editing, we can't always expect a perfect result with just one click. Let's look at the output from a workflow I showed you in another video. This result is almost perfect, isn't it? But the editing process is more involved. First, I used Photoshop to get rid of the bicycle handbars because they were splitting the dress, which would mess up how the dress gets reproduced. Okay, let's check out some more examples. The original image here is black and white. The image on the left, made by context, has better face consistency and a more natural skin tone. This next comparison shows a similar thing. See how these two paper bags have similar highlights and shadows? The text here is to relight the portrait. This next one is pretty cool. The backlighting in the original image was way too strong. So I had the AI try to tone it down. The result from Flex Context is really amazing. The consistency is just fantastic. This blurry landscape shot was just taken with my phone. The consistency from Context is blowing me away again. Just look at those two raised stones on a stone bridge. Flash context can even upscale low resolution images. It can also whip up a new background for a portrait, or you can use it to blend a person into a background that's already there. This is the original background. In the prompt, I asked it to put the woman's sneakers under the water, and only Flux Context actually did it. For this one, I asked her for the woman in a picture to put her hands on her hip. The result is seriously amazing. It's like you are right there taking her picture, and she just moves her arms, and nothing else changes. Here's another fun one. Even without painting, it keeps the character consistent. Flux Context also works for group shot. This time, I didn't even describe their clothes in the prompt, but the output image kept the same clothing style. And lastly, you can use it to generate backgrounds for products. Look at this really unique font. The context model copies it super accurately.
The text in the image from GPT is correct, but the font is different from original. Flux Context did miss this small bits of text on the label though. Maybe the Max version can handle that. Even if it can't, we can fix it in ConfUI by building a workflow or just quickly fix it in Photoshop. Alright, I hope these examples give you a good idea of how the Flux Context models work and how to use them in ConfUI. Writing prompts for these models can be tricky. I put all the prompts and the comparison images together for you. You can download them from the link below. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.